My name is Rebecca Kern Lunbury. I'm the professional animal scientist here at Ward Laboratories and today I'm going to use our very own data uh, from samples that were ran using the NIRS Forage and Feed Testing Consortium equations to explain a very common misconception that relative feed value should be equal to relative forage quality. So very often I'm asked by producers when they get their reports back, well, why is it that there is a difference? And sometimes it can be a very large difference um, between these two values on the very same forage. And so today I'm going to explain a little bit of that. First, I always say, think back to the equations, RFV only contains ADF and NDF. Meanwhile, RFQ takes into account protein, fat, and the most importantly, the NDF digestibility among other more inclusive constituents. And we know that the NDF digestibility is really going to help us to know how that animal is going to perform on that forage. So with that as the preface, let's dig into this figure. So what we have here, we have legume hay here on this side of the screen and we have grass hay over here on this side of the screen. On the vertical axis, we have relative feed value for both legume and grass hay. And on the horizontal axis, we have relative forage quality. Now, a perfect one-to-one -one correlation is going to be this 45 degree line that you see cutting through. What you can see is that with legume hay, quite often, many of those samples are absolutely falling on that line. However, with grass hay, you can see that the correlation is less than that one-to-one -one perfect ratio. And that's because relative feed value was originally a index to compare different legume hays, not to compare any hay and it certainly wasn't meant to be used on grass hay but of course we all do it we all report it and so this is what producers end up seeing and so what you can see on these charts specifically let's look at the grass hay here so we have relative feed value and relative forage quality so a perfect one-to-one -one, that sample should land right here but actually it's going to land approximately out here so what you can see is that typically for the majority of these samples, this bunch down here and these samples here, anything that falls below that 45 degree line, the RFQ is going to be higher than the RFV, which is very commonly what we see on most samples um, anecdotally. <clears throat> Now, looking at the bottom of this figure, what kind of differences should be expected and when should you start to be concerned um, when things aren't quite matching up? So again, we've got legume hay here and grass hay here. Um, on our vertical axis, we have the count of the lab numbers and then we have the difference between RFV and RFQ. Now, as I said, typically RFQ is going to be higher than RFV, so that's why we chose to do it RFQ less RFV instead of the other way around. Um, so what you can see is obviously that legume hay, just like what we looked at up here, it's a lot tighter into this zero mark. Um, and you can see obviously it is skewed to the right, as is the grass hay, very much skewed to the right. But you can see that's a much wider clump than this legume hay and so what we found here is that the median difference um, in values here for legume hay is going to be about nine so we're going to actually be very close with the RFV and the RFQ um, on legume hay but it's not uncommon definitely is staying within the normal distribution if you see um, you know a difference of all the way up to 40 points. Now with grass hay we see the median is more than double that of the legume hay at 23 um, and again though staying within this normal distribution you can expect to see differences of up to 60 um, and still be within that and minus 20 even and still be within that normal distribution range so hopefully this helped you to understand today that RFV and RFQ are not always going to be the same value and it should not be alarming when you do see two different values on your report.